All right, here we go. My dad and I are unloading this 11 foot chunk of white oak to get it into my shop so I can start working on it. Nice shot of it there. Um, so I had my local lumber mill um, go ahead and flatten and straight line rip one side of this slab for me. Uh, I just don't have the capabilities in my shop and the space to uh, you know, flatten up 11 foot slab um, without building a sled and all that stuff. And for this, it was just, I like supporting those guys. They give me a pretty good price on it. So I went ahead and had them do it, but it being about 30 inches wide at this point, there were some pretty gnarly cracks and some checking you can see there. Um, just some stuff I wanted to address. Uh, I will be cutting some of that off for the finished edge, but as you can see, or if you can see on my layout line there, a little bit of that crack will extend to the edge. So these little slab stitcher inlay uh, kits are really great to uh, stabilize those kinds of things. So that hopefully, you know, deter a little bit of much of that, a little bit of that movement as possible. And then there's just a whole bunch of sanding to do. Luckily a buddy let me borrow his uh, Rotex 150 for this. And uh, boy, that sander really, really made short work of getting everything down. Starting out at about 120, just to clean up the mill marks. And then uh, I hit it again with 180. And then um, final sand at about 220. All right, once uh, that side is finished sanding, I'm using the P-Tech 8400, two-part mix, equal parts, um, whatever, polymer, or epoxy, and then the hardener. Um, really great product. This is just going to stabilize some of the smaller cracks that I was a little concerned about that I didn't want to go ahead and put a full bow tie in. Um, I did go ahead and do both sides, top and bottom, of this slab, bow ties and this uh, gap filler, crack filler kind of stuff. Uh, went on really nice, just used a putty knife and kind of um, worked it in in all different directions. Um, you'll see there where I didn't get to the end, I'm gonna be cutting that off anyway. So um, yeah, it's a really great product. It was my first time using it and um, I was really, really happy with it. And as for the top side of uh, like the show side of this slab, I decided to go ahead and go with uh, these concave inlays that I had. I hadn't used any of them yet, and I thought it'd be a cool little um, design component to the top of this uh, table. All right, all uh, surface prep, stabilization, cracks filled, all that good stuff, and it's time for finish. I had went ahead and went with the Odie's uh, Super Duper Oil. Um, I just really like um, how easy it is to apply. Um, it's given me a consistent result every single time. Um, I try not to get caught up in people's politics. I know there's, they've come under a little bit of fire and a little bit of controversy as of late. Um, it's all unfortunate, but um, I'm trying to focus on what gets me the, uh, the best results and what I enjoy applying the most. And uh, this, was a, this was a lengthy application process. You can see even with the time lapse, it's uh, at, a, at about double or maybe triple speed. It still took, I think I worked on it for about 45 minutes, but it's something about applying it that I, you know, I really like. You gotta really put your elbows into it and, you know, and just something really nice about really working it in there, knowing that it's seeping into those fibers so well and then wiping it down and having a clean rag at the end. And boom, we are on site. The slab is completely prepped as far as finish and surface and whatnot, and now I'm just out here um, getting it marked to length. I took my uh, rough measurements from inside, I'm gonna go ahead and use my track saw to cut that down to its final length. You see me there um, pulling out the extension cord because I, uh, I bought the corded uh, Makita track saw kit and uh, it definitely does the trick, and I'm generally on sites where I have electric available, so it's usually not a problem. Um, but I definitely do wish that maybe I would have held out and um, went for the cordless version. You'll see my buddy Jason popping in and out of frame there. Um, good friend of mine. When I was general contractor, he was one of my employees, and uh, so I called him to help me out with this uh, install. And oh my goodness, what a slow-mo shot here. Woo, watch your eyes.
All right, moving inside the house to install these brackets. Um, I had my buddy Josh at Inca Hammer Manufacturing here in uh, town make these brackets up for me, um, specific for this uh, desk. Now I'm using a five inch lag screw. I'm going through shiplap, plaster, and into the studs. So the uh, five inches um, just gave me that little bit added security to support the weight of this uh, desk slab and um, the equipment that the customer will be putting on it. Um, Pre-drill all the way back into the slab and then drive these big bad boys in there. And naturally when I install some brackets like this I gotta give it the old test run. Now unfortunately it's been a while since I actually completed this install so I can't recall if they were a half inch or three-eighths bolts but basically here I'm uh, drilling some pilot holes for my lags that are going to go into the bottom of the slab itself. Uh, Pre-drilled like an eighth inch pilot bit and then um, you know, whatever that is, maybe a quarter or three-eighths hole. Uh, drilled down from the top with a little bit of oil and then double check to make sure that my lag fits through there. After finishing pre-drilling all of my holes, I went ahead and took a little flat file to the top of this to make sure there were no burrs that were that would uh, prevent that slab from setting flat down onto those brackets. So just cleaning that up a little bit. All right, with everything pretty much ready to go, nothing left to do but to bring it on inside and squeeze it up this little stairwell to the second floor. And um, we're gonna wiggle her into, into its final resting place here. Check the fit, and it all looks good. All right, just pre-drilling for my mounting screws on the bottom, and uh, that's all she wrote for this one. Here's some final picks. Thanks for watching and uh, suffering through my first attempt at a voiceover recording during a YouTube video. See you next time.